Okay, so it's time to remove the cylinder head from our 4.2 liter Jeep rebuild. This is a 258 cubic inch inline six. Let's remove the head bolts because it's always exciting to find out what we have in the cylinders. What I want to do is just get these a little bit loose, then we can use the impact on it to speed things up a little bit. Now this is the original motor from the Jeep. We don't know if it's ever been rebuilt or not. And we did receive an extra block and a cylinder head from a friend of mine. So we're going to compare the bores between the two. Uh, the other block and cylinder head are 1980. This is a 79. The other block has been bored over 40. It's actually 1,000th over 40 now. So we'll end up checking out the valve guide, valve to guide clearance, as well as the bore, just to see what we have and see which way we want to go. If we're going to use this block, use the same original cylinder head, or if we're going to uh, save a few bucks and maybe clean up the other block. The other block only has about 20,000 miles on it, and it looks pretty good. This one I noticed was hard from the very beginning. Not sure what's going on with that. Hmm. I would say that head bolt was installed very dry. Not the way you want to do it. Get the head loose there. Feels pretty loose. Now there's no positioning dowels on this block like you would find on many other V8 engines or big blocks. Mopars I'm used to working on. So it's gonna be interesting when we reassemble it. And there we have the cylinder head. Let's go ahead and remove the hydraulic lifters. For this, I'm just using an extendable magnet. And sometimes, and I'll just set them up here for now. Sometimes they've there's a ridge that's built in there that makes it a little bit more difficult to pull out. These seem to be working pretty well. It's kind of the reverse of installation. We'll go ahead and, when they're brand new, after the rebuild, We'll just put them on the magnet. And I'm keeping them in order for now. Don't ask me why. I'm going to replace them. Just a habit. Just a habit. Keep everything in order. Push rods. Lifters. Rocker arms. That sort of thing. Oh, some goo that came out on that one. Look at that. Not what you want. That was pretty crusty. There we go. Okay, so just out of curiosity, I want to check a few of the bottoms of the lifters for any sort of concave. Let's do that next. Okay, so just for grins, I want to check the bottoms of these lifters, like I mentioned. We want to check for anything that's concave. And from what I've seen so far, these lifters look really good. They're actually, you can probably see the light coming through. It'll rock back and forth. So there's some sort of a convexness to it, if you will. These lifters are not in bad shape. So we'll pull these out, label them, set them aside, and then we'll check the cylinder bore and see what we have. Okay, so before we measure our bores of the 258 uh, inline six, uh, of which we just removed the cylinder head, let's look at what a stock bore is. Standard bore 
And this 1979 4.2 liter 258 is 3.75 inches with a stroke of 3.895. Let's see what we actually have. We'll use an inside diameter bore gauge to check the existing bore of this engine. Now there are more exciting, fancier gauges you can use. Um, I believe in the tried and true that I've used for years. So we'll use this inside bore and then we'll measure it with our caliper. So what I want to do is put it in there. I want to go transverse to the crankshaft, okay? So 90 degrees to the crankshaft. I want to center my tool in there the absolute best I can. Okay, I want this stem vertical the best you can. Tighten it down. Pull it out. Now let's go measure it. Okay, so what we're doing is measuring the bore. We've got a couple cylinders measured so far, and they're the same at 3.8105. 3.8105 on that. And if we go to our book, you can see our standard bore is 3.750. So if we go to our calculator, and go with our bore 3.810 minus the standard bore of 3.750. I come up with 60 thousandths of an inch. Let's check our math 3.75, 3.750 plus 0 0.060, 60 thousandths is 3.81, which is what we came up with on our caliper which tells me this block is already at 60 thousandths. We probably are not going to be boring this any further. We'll probably end up going with another block that's uh, been bored less. The next thing I want to do is ultimately flip the engine over, let it drain of the rest of the oil that's in there, remove the oil pan, and we'll start to remove the main bearings and rod bearings. We'll probably go ahead and remove the pistons, and then we can check for cylinder taper, but in the meantime, I want to get this water pump out of the way. I always loosen them up around the edges, kind of like the opposite of a torque sequence. I just don't like to loosen one completely up while the rest are still fully torqued. Yeah, maybe it's old school. That's the way I do it. Clearly those go into a water jacket. We'll have to seal those. And it's time to reassemble. And you can just use Teflon for that. Don't use silicone gasket maker on anything that goes into a water jacket. A little bit of uh, Teflon is fine. Notice that they're not all the same length. The two I took off the bottom were longer. The two I took off the top are a little bit shorter. That's what they look like. So. And there's your water pump. The impeller looks good. This was not leaking coolant before. May just clean it up and reuse it. Okay, so next we want to remove the harmonic balancer, and what I want to do is keep the crankshaft from spinning, so I put a couple of flywheel to crankshaft bolts in place. Those are a 7 16th inch, uh, inch fine thread, and with this pry bar against the engine hoist, uh, should keep it from spinning. Now we'll go ahead and remove the uh, bolt for the flywheel. Okay, so now that the crankshaft won't spin freely, we can go ahead and remove the uh, the bolt that holds the pulleys and the harmonic balancer on. And then we'll find out if this thing slides off the snout of the crankshaft or if we're going to use a puller. Sometimes you get lucky and they slide right off, but you really don't want it that loose anyway. Looks like someone put this on correctly with the proper Loctite because it's not coming off easy. There you can see your 
crankshaft bolt, lock washer, flat washer. See how thick it is? And I just want to tighten her up. Pull it off. She'll start to pull off as you turn it. And I can see it moving. You can see the gap widening here between the timing chain cover. It's going to pop off any second now. You want to make sure you support it so it doesn't fall. And here she comes. There you have your balancer. Now, let's remove the timing chain cover. It's going to take a 7 16 a half inch, a 9 16 sockets, and a 9, a 5 inch deep socket. So you got these little ones here that go up into the oil pan. We'll go ahead and remove those. That one's gone. Don't know why. That one. Let's get this guy out of here. And you can see all these others we have to do right here. Some of these have washers on them. Some don't. Not sure why, unless it was assembled incorrectly or just missing parts. chain cover off now to expose the timing chain and there you go a little more slop than I like of course this isn't a race engine but it looks like a good quality chain we'll go ahead and replace that when we rebuild it Okay, so we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, cam sprocket, crank sprocket, and the timing chain. There's your cam bolt with flat washer. Set that in our bucket. Here's our oil slinger and keyway for a harmonic balancer. Don't lose this. Oil slinger needs to be cleaned up. Okay, so next to come off is the cam sprocket. This one is seems to be stuck on the cam just a little bit. Um, I'm not going to go for my three jaw or two jaw puller right now, but I want to do is since the camshaft moves just a little bit in and out, I want to go ahead and put a pull it out a little bit and block it. We're going to try to tap it just a little bit here see what happens and there she goes so now we can pull our cam and crank assemblies off there you go cam did want to slide out a little bit there she is. Okay, so we have the cam sprocket off, and that'll wrap up this video. Next one, we'll go ahead and pull off the oil pan, uh, pistons and rods, and the crankshaft as well.